Well, ahoy there. The challenge for this project is extremely difficult, but simple. I'm gonna turn this log into a surfboard. <laughs> Why? Because I love a challenge. And because I wanna teach my family, if you want something, you can go out and build it. They love water sports. It's fun, it strengthens their core, teaches them balance, <laughs> and nurtures their love for the Great Lakes. So let's go check in on my dad and see how he's doing with the sawmill. This wood is from a cottonwood tree. It has a pretty good strength to weight ratio, so it seemed like the perfect wood to use for this project. Be sure to watch until the end of the video because I did take the surfboard out on Lake Michigan and it didn't quite go as I had hoped. Now that we've got the log all cut up and it's been out here drying for two years, we can take it back to my shop and get working on it just messing. My dad and I cut the tree down when he built that fort back there for his grandkids and expanded his pond. But this wood is from the same tree as that log that we just cut up. So let's load it up and get back to work. When I first had the idea for this project, I immediately thought of my good friend and YouTube mentor, Mr. Ten Hundred. In the past, he's painted custom skateboard decks. And so I thought maybe he'd want to try a surfboard. So I called him and asked if he wanted to be a part of the project. And he said, yeah. Sure. So be sure to watch until the end of the video because with his help, this turned out to be one of the coolest projects I've ever worked on. It's summer here in Michigan, but summer doesn't last forever. I've got to get these ugly boards shaped into a surfboard before it gets too cold to take it out on Lake Michigan. They're not exactly straight or square, so I'm gonna to need to do a little bit of work here to get them straightened up and ready for glue up. I've been running these through the thickness planer for about three hours and uh, I'm pretty sick of it. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a break and start doing some layout now that they're cleaned up and I can see the grain and uh, get a little bit better understanding of each board. Because I've got 21 boards here and chances are I don't need all of them. If you're curious about this track saw or any of the other tools I use in this video, Please check out my affiliate links down below. I do get a percentage of anything you purchase and it would be super helpful. Thanks. I think I got them fitting together nice and tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them to length and then glue them up. Let's talk about surfboard design. In general, this board has been designed for me, my skill level, on this lake, Lake Michigan. It's a long board. It's eight foot, six inches long. Should be easy to catch smaller waves. It's got soft rails, which means it's more buoyant and it's not gonna dig into the wave as much. Uh, so it's not gonna turn as sharp, but again, it'll be more stable. The back tail of the board doesn't come to a sharp point, meaning when you're at the back of the board, you have more stability going back and forth. Hopefully, if I've done my job right, it should be just the right board for this lake. Because every design aspect of a surfboard is super important, I decided to find a good long board online and trace it just to make sure that I get the right length, scale, and shape. There are a lot of different ways you can build a wooden surfboard dating all the way back to the original surfboards that were made out of just one big chunk of log that were solid all the way through. The particular design method I'm using for this project was inspired by Danny Hess. I saw a YouTube video by Bloomberg that showed his design method and I thought it was really um, achievable and something I could do myself. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. He said in that video, quote, I've made thousands of surfboards, so I really feel like I've developed a real trust in my eye. About 2,000 boards into it, I started feeling like, I just know what this needs to look like. So naturally I thought, how hard could it be? The basic idea is that you make a panel for the top and another panel for the bottom. And then you take a couple more layers for the center. They'll be hollow in the middle to create an airspace in between. So what you end up with is a sandwich of four to five layers with hollow space in the center. One of my biggest challenges for this build was that none of the logs we cut up were actually long enough for this eight foot, six inch long board. 
So all the rails and all the panels had to be made up of multiple different lengths of wood. Well, I've got the tail glued on already. I've got the rails cut out and fitted. So I need to bend the board and glue these on and hopefully the board will retain its nice curve. A curve down the length of the board is critical to the design so that the board skims across the top of the water and doesn't dive into the water. The surfboard's been drying for two days. I think it's totally possible I screwed this whole thing up and I think it might be twisted a little bit and warped. So I'm really kind of freaked out right now. I'm gonna pick it up and see how it looks. Not too bad. It's a little warped. Not too bad though. So I'm laying out the third layer of wood here and I'm looking at this air cavity thinking, is this gonna be enough to keep me afloat? Uh, so I'm gonna test the buoyancy of the wood because this doesn't seem like enough air space to keep me above the waves. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Got four boards selected for this layer. I'm gonna run them through the planer to take care of this last little bit of rough sawn surface. This project was actually kind of difficult for me because it was so repetitive. At first it was hours and hours of shaping boards and then it was gluing and clamping and gluing and clamping over and over. Well, I have it planned out better this time. I should be ready for anything, so I'm gonna get squeezing on this glue up. By this part of the project, I was just so excited to be doing something different. I couldn't hardly wait. This is the part I've been looking forward to most for this whole project. I get to start shaping the rails, at least the top rail. Tomorrow I'll glue the last piece on the bottom, but I just want to get this shaping started. I'm so excited to do it. I've got one last panel to glue up, and then I'm gonna glue it to the bottom of the surfboard. And then I think that'll be all of the major glue ups I have to do. I've used at least a whole bottle of Tight Bond 3 on this. A lot of gluing, <laughs> a lot of getting straight edges. It's really tedious, but I'm almost done, thank goodness. Well, it's the final glue up, and I wouldn't care if I ever saw a bottle of glue or clamp again. Thankfully, I'm done. Now, it's the first time I ever get to pick this up and feel the full weight of it. And wouldn't you know it, it's uh, heavier than it should be. <laughs> I'm gonna have to be in pretty good shape to surf this thing. That is, if I even float on it. <laughs> well, I wanted to do most of the shaping with hand planes, but I'm having a really hard time getting this tail and the nose shaped out. So I'm gonna use the electric hand plane and see how that works. Hopefully I don't tear out a lot of material. After having put this whole thing together, I'm not so sure this is the best way to do the tail and the nose. At the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you all the things I would do differently were I to do this again. I guess it really does take a couple of thousand times to perfect it. I originally wanted to have this done in August and then September, and now it's the middle of October. It's gonna be pretty, pretty cold when I have to test this. I don't know if we're gonna have another day above 65 degrees for the rest of the year, but I don't wanna finish this video without testing this out on the lake. So I've really gotta spend as much time this weekend as I can getting this done so I can take it to Peter to get painted. Believe it or not, there were actually times my block plane got so hot from the friction that it was almost too hot to hold. I had never experienced that before. And speaking of long and repetitive tasks, lots of sanding to fine tune the rails and get this thing nice and smooth. 
Well, now I need to drill a hole in the surfboard. I need to put this little vent in there. Surfboard is sealed tight, and if it gets too hot or humidity changes or things like that, there'd be a difference in pressure between the inside of the board and the outside. So I'm gonna put this little vent in there that lets air through, but not water. Well, uh, it's been another couple weeks and it's starting to get really cold out here. As you can see, fall is in full swing and I still don't have the surfboard done. This is gonna be really cold. I wanna say a huge thank you to Total Boat for sending me epoxy so that we could finish this board. It was a huge help and if you are interested in buying epoxy yourself, I have an affiliate link listed down below where you can get a discount and some of that would be returned back to me to help support this channel. That would be amazing. I also now need to figure out how to put the fin on. And I'm gonna do the fin different than I've ever seen it done before. I'm, I'm actually gonna go all the way through the surfboard and then attach it from the top. A lot of surfboards do have removable fins, but I wanted this one to be a little bit different. Because this is gonna be an art piece as well as a surfboard, I wanted the fin to be removable so it could be hung on the wall. And I just don't wanna use the typical plastic insert for fins i want to make a custom wooden fin and so i gotta attach the fin in a little bit different way and i wanted it to look really unique i don't know if it's going to be the best option but hopefully it'll look good i had sketched out a bunch of different ideas on how to attach this fin ideas using rope and rivets and bolts and all sorts of different things but i figured a through mortise would actually work out pretty good because I could just route one hole through the board and waterproof that and not have to worry about any other penetrations. I have actually never done a through mortise before, but uh, what's a better time to start than when you're under a hard deadline and uh, have to give this project to one of YouTube's uh, most popular artists. Oh my goodness, it's getting so cold out here. The high tomorrow is 32 degrees. And I have to get this surfboard over to Peter before I freeze to death. Halloween, the end of October, and it's snowing while I'm taking the surfboard to Peter's studio. So hopefully he can do his part fairly quickly so I won't be having to surf in ice cubes. Now the only problem will be trying to find him in his massive new studio. Peter? 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 Hi, Peter. Oh, hello. You ready? Yes, I was rejuvenating. I am prepared. Holy cow. Here it is. It's only four months late. Dude, that's beautiful. Look at the curvature on this thing. That's smooth as a baby's bottom. I love it. It's so sick. I think I only have one request, and that's that we can tell it's still made of wood. It's a lot heavier than a foam board, so I want to at least look wood, because I think it's kind of novel. Let me try. Oh! What do you think that is? We should get the shipping scales over here and find out how much this thing weighs. It's probably about 10 pounds heavier than it should be. Yeah. <laughs> I think from this point on, yeah. you do you. There's probably gonna be a lot of phone calls and texts and yeah. questions. Wow, yeah. this is so sick. I'm like so hyped on this amazing canvas. That'd be so hilarious if I just gave it back to you and it was just a life-size portrait of you. <laughs> it would fit on here, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is one of the coolest, biggest, most awesomely shaped canvases I've ever worked on. And I'm excited and intimidated. And uh, I think it's gonna either be super awesome or I'm gonna totally <laughs> up your five month long project. Before I show you the final shots and the surf trial, I'm gonna tell you everything I did wrong on this project. First of all, on the tail and on the nose, I rotated the grain 90 degrees, which makes it really strong and durable. But the problem is if the grain is moving one direction, this one's moving this direction, it's possible that it could delaminate and come apart. I probably could have done that better. Second of all, I really overbuilt this thing. I was worried it wouldn't be strong enough. I wanted to make sure I had enough room to carve the rails how I wanted to. And I just put too much wood into this thing. 
So it's about 15 pounds heavier than it should be. Uh, and lastly, there is a little bit of a twist to it because when I did the first glue up to get the bend in it, I didn't think through it enough. I didn't plan ahead very well. Now go check out 1000's video and see how he did all the painting and how he did the epoxy. Thanks to Total Boat for sending us all that epoxy. I'll have a link to 1000's video in the description below. Well, it's the day before Thanksgiving, November 22nd, and I got my wetsuit. It's about 43 degrees outside. Yeah, I'm gonna try and surf this thing. It's a very untraditional way <laughs> of preparing your surfboard, but I like it. Water temp is about 45, 50 degrees. Thankfully, the Coast Guard's out here, so if I get swept away, they should be able to find me within a few minutes. I've only surfed twice in my whole life, so uh, I definitely know what I'm doing. Should be good. Oh my gosh, it's gotta be so cold right now. This is honestly one of the coolest things I have ever built. Thanks in large part to 1000 and his incredible artistry. That's the beauty of friendship and collaboration is that working together, you can take it so much further than just one person alone. Is it worth $10,000? <laughs> well, it is to us. Now, we'll see if it's worth that to anybody else. If you are interested, there will be a link down below to 1000's website. Unfortunately, I'm not in great shape and I was out there for about 15 or 20 minutes and I felt like I was going to die, like literally die. I'm so exhausted. It doesn't look like the water like damaged it or anything. It looks like it's in the same shape as when it went in. And I couldn't catch a wave. Woo! But you did it, bro. Yeah. We did hang 10, hundred style. <laughs> okay, well I survived. I'm gonna go home and puke and take a nap. Thanks for watching. Sir. <laughs>